Good evening and welcome back to Golden Eagle Sports Report. Tonight we discuss the latest surrounding men's and women's basketball, updates on lacrosse, and a new debut, a new segment called This or That. So get ready Marquette Nation because Golden Eagle Sports Report starts right now. From the Jeannie Hayes Virtual Studio at Marquette University, this is Golden Eagle Sports Report. Marquette gets the rebound, and the champions have gone down! Hello everyone, I'm Kristen Parisi. And I'm Kylie Getz. The month of February continues to haunt the men's basketball team. Marquette is left out of the AP Top 25 poll for a second week in a row. The Golden Eagles received just 12 votes after picking up 77 last week. Three other Big East teams remain in the rankings with Villanova sitting at 8, Providence at 11, and UConn at 21. The Golden Eagles don't play again until this Saturday as they welcome in the Butler Bulldogs on National Marquette Day. The men's team traveled to Omaha, Nebraska over the weekend to take on the Creighton Blue Jays. Marquette led by five points with five minutes left in the game, but was shut down on offense the rest of the way. The Blue Jays go on to win 83-82, to completing the regular season sweep over the Golden Eagles. Graduate student guard Darrell Marcel finishes with a team high of 23 points for the Marquette on 11-for-18 shooting. The team falls to 9-7 and in conference play. Men's head coach Shaka Smart shares his thoughts with the media following the loss. The women's team continues its four-game road trip against the UConn Huskies. Marquette's offense struggles early and musters up just 14 points in the first two frames of action. UConn goes on to defeat Marquette 69-38, handing the Golden Eagles their fourth loss in five games. Coming off the bench, redshirt senior guard Avina Westbrook scores a game-high 17 points for the Huskies. Graduate student forward Lauren Van Cluden puts up 12 points for Marquette. With the win, UConn clinches the Big East regular season title for a second season in a row. Before heading out to Creighton, the men's basketball team welcomed in the Georgetown Hoyas. Marquette looks to keep the Hoyas winless in conference play. Molly Gretzlock has more. Shaka Smart lookalikes? All over? Yes, you're seeing it right. Wednesday night was full of students matching Coach Smart style as the Marquette men's basketball team takes on the Georgetown Hoyas. The start of the match is closely contended, but back-to-back -back threes from first-year guard Cam Jones allows Marquette to break free. Behind 17 first-half points from Jones, Marquette enters halftime up 48-31. The Golden Eagles' offensive efforts continue in the second, and they are able to shut down any comebacks from the Hoyas, winning by a score of 77 to 66. You know, Cam Jones really got going. That, that was huge for us. Uh, I thought the guys passed the ball well for the majority of the of the night. The confidence behind Jones' shot allows him to score a career high of 19 points. 
all my teammates believe in me, make every shot I take, and I see a few go through, I mean, I, I, mean, I just feel like I can just fire it. Graduate student forward Kirk Kweth also posts a season high of 15 points. Um, I came out with uh, more energy, you know, uh, more violence than I did against Butler. Um, I just felt, I felt like I wasn't doing my part. Marquette will now travel to Nebraska on Sunday for a matchup against the Creighton Blue Jays. Reporting from Pfizer Forum, I'm Molly Grutzlock, Marquette Wire Sports. We now welcome in sports reporter Ben Schultz and executive sports editor John Leuzzi as we debut our new segment called This or That. Ben, John, great to have you back on the show. Great to be here. Good so to be for here. our first question, oh sorry Ben. So for our <laughs> first question of This or That, which do you think is more likely to happen, although February hasn't been the best for the men's team? Justin Lewis wins Big East Player of the Year or Coach Smart to win Big East Coach of the Year? Well, if you asked this question to me about a few weeks ago, Kristen, I probably would go with Coach Smart because he was at the likelihood. But since the team has gone into February, we all know the likelihood of how Marquette succeeds in February. It's not really strong. But so i got to go with Justin Lewis. I mean, he's one of the perennial scorers in the Big East Conference up at the top throughout the entire season in the statistics. And he also, more importantly in my part, he has scored in double-figure margin and points pretty much besides one or two games on the season. So that's pretty pretty good for me on that. And, you know, Providence, Ed Cooley, the American dream, especially after last night's big win. Mm. Course. Ben? Yeah, I think it's going to be Justin Lewis. I think Providence head coach, like John said, Ed Cooley, pretty much has the Big East Coach of the yeah. Year wrapped up already. Yeah, I mean, although Ed Cooley is probably going to win, what Coach Smart has done in one year for the Golden Eagles has just been awesome. And then yeah. what Justin Lewis has done in after coming in first year to yeah. this year has been a big improvement. We might see him in the NBA. We might not. He might come back. We'll see next year. But for the women, Lauren Van Clunen leads the Golden Eagles in points per game with 13.3, while Carissa McLaughlin is right behind her with 12.4. Who ends the season with, with the team lead in points per game, Van Clunen or McLaughlin? I think it's going to be Van Clunen. Uh, there's just two games left, and she's already got a little bit more of a margin on McLaughlin. But for McLaughlin's uh, sake, she did have two pretty big games against uh, St. John's and Providence, who are their final two games. So if she can replicate that, then she could give Lauren Van Clunen a, a nice little race towards the end. I'll take the other end of this, and I'm going to say Chris McLaughlin. Uh, I mean, for Marquette, you're, the success they're going to have down the stretch in these last two games in hopes of clinching that first round bye is going to be how quick McLaughlin can get going on the offensive end. And Ben, let me just ask you, who is Marquette playing tomorrow night? Providence. Well, Providence plays, that's right, but Providence plays with his own defense, and McLaughlin told us at last time when Providence was here, she loves going against the zone, so I could, I could see a big game out of her tomorrow, and that's a big game for Marquette on this weekend where they need to get two wins. Yeah, they definitely need to get the momentum going into the Big East uh, tournament because yep. it hasn't been the greatest no. down the stretch. I mean, four losses in five games, they really also took a hit in February, yep. but both the men and the women sit in fifth place in the Big East Conference, which is a surprise. The women, they were expected to go higher. The men were expected to go lower. But who finishes higher in the standings, guys? The I'm men or the women? I'm going to have to go with the men, and it's going to probably very surprising for you to hear this out of me, Kristen. I picked the women team. They were going to pick, finish second in the Big East in, my, in the preseason. That's not luckily going to happen. So I think the men, they have a favorable three games right now. They could go 3-0. and I know they'll be excited on Saturday against for National Marquette Day, but for the women, they might have a chance. But St. John's, don't tap them out. Ben? Yeah, like you, John, I picked the women to finish second in the Big East, um, but clearly that's not going to happen. Yeah. So I think the men are going to finish higher. They do have a little bit of an easier schedule mm -hmm. uh, to finish off the season, including two home games. So I think that's going to play a big part. Um, as Providence played the women's pretty tough when they played them here mm -hmm. at the Al McGuire Center. Um, so we'll see how they can do against them on the road. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And I also think I had them pick the women's second in the Big East preseason poll. But it's college basketball. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. So we'll see what happens down the road. It should be an exciting end for sure going into March. Ben, John, thanks again for joining us on our first edition of This or That. Marquette basketball is struggling in February. But what about Marquette lacrosse? We'll discuss next.
to Sophia and Gabriel. Even though these old knees can't follow on your adventure to the forest today, these flowers represent my love. These stitches and threads join us together. And wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Stand is precise. No margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to load their minds. Dare to explore. Dare to stem. Learn more at She Can Stem. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. To Sophia and Gabriel, even though these old knees can't follow on your adventure to the forest today, these flowers represent my love. These stitches and threads join us together. And wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Every day, millions of people are connecting. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. Welcome back to Golden Eagle Sports Report. Once again, I'm Kristen Parisi. And I'm Kylie Getz. Both Marquette women's and men's lacrosse programs hit the road over the weekend. The Marquette men's lacrosse team takes on Jacksonville University in Florida. Redshirt sophomore attacker Devin Cohen, first-year attacker Bobby O'Grady, and redshirt first-year attacker Luke Blank all score a pair of goals in the match. While trailing, Marquette's defense holds Jacksonville scoreless in later stages, but is unable to generate a comeback on offense, falling 14-10. The team will play its home opener at Valley Fields this Saturday against Utah. The Marquette women's lacrosse team looks to rebound from its loss to Northwestern. The team heads out to Kentucky for a matchup against Louisville. Louisville offense takes full control early, building a 6-1 lead. The Golden Eagles slowly chip away the deficit thanks to a hat trick from junior midfielder Emma Scottadato, but still finds themselves down 12 to 6 at the half. Marquette only finds the back of the net twice for the remainder of the game. The goals come from graduate student attacker Kyra Lamate and junior attacker Mary Schumar. Louisville goes on to topple Marquette by a final score of 19 to 8. Looking to scap, snap their two-game losing streak, the women continue their weekend of action against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Senior attacker Shea Garcia sparks the Golden Eagles offense, notching a hat trick in the first quarter. The Golden Eagles go up seven goals at the half, but the Buckeyes respond, scoring nine unanswered goals in the final two quarters. Marquette falls to Ohio State 18-11, extending their losing streak to three games. The women travel to Michigan for a match against the Detroit Mercy tomorrow morning. That's all for lacrosse updates. Coming up, did the University of Michigan men's basketball head coach cost his team an NCAA tournament bid? We'll talk all about that and more next. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me. 
And there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Roll over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Every day, millions of people are connecting. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. Forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to load their minds. Dare to explore. Dare to stem. Learn more at She Can Stem. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. And we're back in Studio 7 as we will discuss the latest surrounding professional sports. Joining me on the panel tonight is John Leuzzi, Ben Schultz, and Jackson Gross. So there's a lot of drama to get in, so let's start with the NFL, why don't we? Aaron Rodgers continues to stir the pot about his future after shaping a post on Instagram that left many questioning if it was alluding to his retirement. Rodgers later went on the Pat McPhee show and announcing he has not made any decision yet. What do you guys think of the post? What do you think his decision will be for next year? Stays in Green Bay, retires, or leaves? I think he's going to stay in Green Bay as a Packer fan. I don't really care what he does Boom. off the field as long as he's performing like an MVP, um, which he has done the last two seasons. So as long as he continues to do that, I don't really care what he's doing off the field. As long as on the field, it's good. I'm not buying into any of this. What he's, what his scheme. He got full cleansed and all over the last 12 days. If the full cleanse is only going to mean one thing, guys, he's going to be wearing the midnight green next year in Philadelphia. Oh. The Philadelphia oh. Eagles are going to be trading oh. for Aaron Rodgers. I thought Jalen Hurts was the guy. No. I, I mean, but I, I thought he was okay. the guy. I mean, Devontae, Aaron, and Philly. Okay. Super Bowl champs. Okay. Come on. They already look good in green and gold. We don't need to take them out. Okay. Of let's all right, all right. let's let's bring, let's bring a little bit of objectivity to this con. What are you going to say? The Bears. Uh, the Bears. The Bears. No. Because no. I, <laughs> I as God. great as he is, <laughs> no shot no in Chicago. In Chicago. I could not stop that. Stop but he is going to be wearing orange and, orange and blue next, next season, season when him and Devontae Adams get traded to the Denver Broncos. 
Packers are... You think Devontae's going to Denver? Wherever Aaron goes, that's where Devontae goes. And the nice thing is Broncos can offer a lot of draft capital and Jerry Judy or even Cortland Sutton if they want to do overpay, in my opinion. But why would they give away Jerry Judy when they just, got, just drafted him? And why would they not want to pair him with Aaron? Well, because, well, because you have to give something up. You can't. You're not going to be able to expect to just give three number ones for Rodgers and Adams. You're going to have to give well, something. Well, Adams up. is a free agent, so he, he's not going to get traded. Well, the, the, the Packers, Packers, Packers can franchise tag. That's true. That, that is true. I don't know. Any? I think. I mean, I don't buy into it. I didn't buy into Tom Brady when he said he was retiring. Then he did. But Aaron Aaron Rodgers has been all over the place. He's just trying to keep himself in the media. So I don't. I don't know if he's going to retire. He's not. Whatever. I don't care. It really doesn't have much to me because the Jets haven't really played Aaron Rodgers all that much. So he hasn't have really. The Jets had a winning season in like one, two, three. Last How many time years? Because then I think we were all in like elementary or middle oh. school. Oh, <laughs> yeah, when I was trying to eat mac and cheese for the first time. <laughs> like the Bears have done any hey, hey, they better. They title in 2018. Yeah, and then what did they do with that? They had a big celebration in the locker room. Like they won the Super Bowl and what? They got bounced out? <laughs> yeah. The team that's won a Super Bowl MVP. recently is the guy over here. <laughs> No one's. No one mentioned. I, I, no just one had, I just had anyways, to anyways, right, anyways. College, College basketball. basketball. Lots happened, but a lot happened in that Michigan Wisconsin game. University of Michigan men's basketball head coach Juwan Howard is suspended for the rest of the regular season for throwing a punch during the post hand, post game handshakes after Wolverines game against Wisconsin. Do you all think this is a fair punishment? I mean, he was the only one that got suspended. Players got a couple players got suspended. But what do you guys think? I think it's probably, probably the best, way, the best to way to go overall. I think regardless, almost regardless of any situation that happens, you can't be throwing punches at assistant coaches and things like that. And I understand players getting involved because they're trying to protect their guys and all that kind of stuff. But there's just no place for any type, that type of violence or any type of violence in college basketball. So I think it's, it's more than justified the fact that he got suspended for at least the rest of the regular season. So it's, it's, it stinks that this had to happen. I don't think it was a punch. I'll be honest. It kind of smacked. Yeah, it kind of like, a, it yeah. kinda like yeah. and right before that, the Wisconsin assistant coach kind of pushed one of his players mm -hmm. at that point. It's a little bit of self-defense. Like you're the head coach. You can't do that. But I think it was taken a lot to maybe not out of context, but I think it, blew up a little bit more than it necessarily should have. Yeah. Uh, the five-game suspension seems fair. The people calling for him to be fired, that seems a little ridiculous. $40,000 fine? That, yeah. uh, that, that's a little hefty. I played in the NBA for so long. I, 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 I don't think uh, he's, 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 he's well. I don't think he's <laughs> fine. I'm not saying it's going to be hard for him. I'm just saying $40,000 and a five-game suspension, and people are now calling for the team not to make the NCAAs, but I'm like, they didn't cheat. I don't they know didn't if they do would have made it, it before. Him. See, the thing is, like, I agree the five games was fine and the 40,000 fine was also fine. But th the problem with me, guys, is this is his second time with an incident of this sort in a span of just one year. You like, they ha he did this in the Big East, the, not Big East, Big Ten tournament last season. Uh, I believe against it was Maryland. So he has an anger issue. But for the, the where I take this is, there's no place for punching. There's no place for violence in sports. When you're a leader of a program, a program such like the Big Ten that prides itself in teamwork and fairness and all that good stuff in their, in their motto, you can't have that happen. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to respect your opponent. You got to respect the, the coach you're going against. But you also have to make sure you lead a program the right way. So do you want him fired? No, I don't want him fired. I think the fine was the right and all. But I'm saying what happened there was no need there was no right in or place yeah. in college but do you think that like i feel like yes hitting him wasn't the right thing well, but i yeah. feel like the assistant coach kind of fired it up and they i mean obviously players got suspended but they only got a ten thousand dollar fine but like what it like wisconsin i don't know i'm not a huge wisconsin fan i'm a maryland maryland girl at heart i don't really like wisconsin they've done some things in the past too mm. but it's just college basketball i mean yeah. i feel like Duke has been at the forefront of a lot of scandals, so it's just like college basketball, you never know what's going to happen. Tempers flared. Yeah. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Well, Michigan didn't need to be pressing. Wisconsin didn't need to call the timeout. There was so just I a think, lot going on. I think there was yeah. a lot a happening. Lot going on. And guard didn't need to put his hands on Howard at the end of the game. Like, that yeah. was just unnecessary, too. A lot escalated it, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I don't know. 
We'll see. It'll yeah. it'll be it'll be fun to see the big the Big Ten tournament if those teams face each other again. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. Moving on to NBA basketball, former Marquette men's basketball player Juan Toscano Anderson was the runner-up in the NBA dunk contest behind Nick's Obi Toppin. Oh yeah, he's also the first NBA player of Mexican descent to participate in the event. But afterwards, many basketball fans were left uninspired from what they saw in the contest. Did you guys find it entertaining? What changes need to be made to make it better? Was it the worst dunk contest of all time? Do they need to just get rid of it altogether? Or how can we get it to prime time 90s, early 2000s? I'll sum it up real quickly for all of us. It was one of the most boring dunk contests I've ever seen. And I'm, this is coming from a guy who doesn't really know or follow NBA as much as you three. It made me want to go to bed. It made me want to go to bed. It also was late, so I feel like it was past oh, yeah. your bedtime. Kareem so. left early. Like, it was past your bedtime, yeah. so it's okay. But, but yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely a sleeper. There was no fifty, no fifty <laughs> in that slam dunk contest. And Dwayne Wade wasn't even judging it, and they didn't get. I, <laughs> okay, but Jay, can we talk about Jalen Green? He hyped it up so much, and he like, I don't even know if he ever actually made a dunk. He just, it was just a bunch of so jumping around yeah. to me. So well, was he awful. was a heavy favorite, and he put down some. If he would have hit the first dunk that he made like right away. I think it would have been more exciting, but after all those failed attempts before that, that did not help him at all. No. But like, 2016, Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine, one of the best dunk contests, probably the best dunk contest of all time. So like, what needs to happen to get that back to that kind of level? Do we need to like, get more better players? Like, I feel like the players that are in the dunk contest had some good dunks during the regular season, so why can't they bring that? to the contest. I think because of like social media and there being pro dunkers now, there's so <laughs> many different things that you see on social media. So on social media, we see all these crazy dunks, but back then when Michael Jordan was winning it, like that was the time to showcase the crazy dunks, everything crazy like that. And so now we don't get to see that. And I think that hurts them a little bit. And then the three point contest, that's becoming super exciting <laughs> because it's new. Like obviously you can see a bunch of players shoot threes, mm -hmm. but Carl Anthony Towns winning it. That was pretty exciting. Yeah. All right, Well, we're going to have to switch gears really fast here. The MLB, the league officially postponed strength training until March 5th and will begin canceling games instead of postponing them if the new CBA deal is not reached by Monday. What do you guys, what does it mean for the upcoming season? Are we not going to get baseball? Quick thoughts here. I know, John, you're yeah. mad. Can I have that camera look at me for a quick <laughs> second here? Can I, can I, can I get, thanks. Let me, let me sum it all up. There's going to be no baseball. I'm going to see you all in 2023 because Rob Manfred is a bona fide scrub. He's the worst <laughs> commissioner in all the sports. Like, he has in, he initiated this lockout. Who, who shows up? Who makes the fans show up? What? The players. So I'm in favor of the players. I think what they're asking for is pretty reasonable. And you just, just want make to go to happen. free agency faster. Why does it matter? Yeah. Like the well, it's, it's not even that. It's that since the owners want to expand yeah. the playoffs, they get more TV revenue. The <laughs> players don't see a dime of yeah, that they don't play, get TV revenue. Yeah. And MLB last season made $1.5 billion <laughs> in their TV deals. And the winning team on the World Series team, they get each player gets about just under $500,000. <laughs> and that's if you win the World Series. And it gets less and less. Yep. So... I am completely in favor of yeah. what players are asking for. It's completely reasonable, and the fact that it's, this is all happening is awful. Yeah, um, so we'll see. Maybe next week we'll have an answer, but that's all we have today. Thanks for the great discussion, but we're out of time. Be sure to tune in next week for all of our coverage of Marquette sports and more. For Kali Getz, I'm Kristen Parisi. Good night, Marquette.